After a series of rather unfortunate updates, OpenAI seems determined to win back the trust of its users. The new AI image model, GPT Image 1.5, embedded directly in ChatGPT, enters the ring with a clear message, positioning itself against Google's Nano Banana Pro, Kling's Image 01, and ByteDance's Seedream 4.5. As most of you already know, generating images with ChatGPT is dead simple, so I'll skip the basics and jump straight into a full test run. The results are more than just interesting. And yes, for those who still want to know how and where to use GPT image 1.5, including outside the native platform, there's a short guide at the end. And in the verdict, I'll share a few tricks I've picked up while working with it. But first, let's dive into the showdown. Nano Banana Pro versus GPT image 1.5. I went all in on this, as you probably expected. To start, I had both platforms challenge each other with impossible tasks. Gemini 3 for Nano Banana Pro and ChatGPT for GPT Image 1.5. The first batch of ideas they came up with felt a bit too vague and standard, so I brought in my own set of custom themes, and trust me, there's a lot to see. All the prompts are listed in the comments below. Feel free to leave a like or subscribe if you enjoy the deep dives. Thanks a lot. Now, let's talk speed and resolution. Still the two big pain points. ChatGPT claims image generation is four times faster now, but in my tests it still took around 58 seconds per image, regardless of method. That's pretty slow. And while the new model delivers decent visuals, the resolution is surprisingly low. No idea why that hasn't been prioritised, especially when the entire market is clearly heading toward higher fidelity. Whether the rest of the promises hold up, we'll see in a moment. For the testing itself, I didn't stick to just one method, the goal was to get a fair and complete picture, including results from API users. The idea was to generate the most objective comparison possible. The layout of the grid makes it easy to follow. Lower left shows Nano Banana Pro via API, available in 1K, 2K and 4K. Upper left is Google's own native platform, Gemini 3 Pro at 2K. Upper right is ChatGPT's native platform, and bottom right is GPT image 1.5 via API. The first test series focuses entirely on text to image. Every example has its own appeal, but examples nine and 10 introduce a very different and far more demanding level of complexity. Example one, the bioluminescent physics challenge. This test explores light behavior in total darkness. The model must render a translucent deep sea creature glowing from within with light realistically scattering through gelatinous layers and illuminating suspended particles to create depth in black water. The Nano Banana Pro result, upper left, is strikingly dynamic. Example two, the analog film simulation challenge. Here the goal is to recreate physical media imperfections. A cinematic Viking portrait must show gritty 35 mm grain, light leaks, and weather effects without losing fine details like beard hair or frost. The challenge is balancing visual chaos without turning muddy. Example three, the fluid typography challenge. A demanding mix of liquid simulation and optics. Glowing water forms the word liquidity in midair, each droplet refracting an inverted city image. GPT image 1.5 often overcrowds the frame but the upper left result stands out as elegant and almost perfect. Example four, the micro texture legibility challenge. Five languages, including Arabic and Hebrew, must be printed onto a soft paper napkin. The model has to manage ink bleed, fiber distortion, and ultra fine text simultaneously. Only Nano Banana Pro via API handles this cleanly without smearing. Example five, the information density challenge. A massive chalkboard filled edge to edge with dense, consistent mathematical notation. Beyond content, perspective is key. Equations must curve naturally toward the frame edges while staying legible. GPT image 1.5 favors visual clarity, but the result feels more symbolic than grandly staged. Example six, the material integration challenge. This test separates pasted from truly embedded text. Narrative writing must be absorbed into an old map, following parchment folds and faded ink patterns. 
GPT Image 1.5 pulls this off with the confidence of a master cartographer. Example 7. The Logical Layout Challenge. A complex flowchart describing a theoretical AI architecture. Clean wiring, no overlaps, no dead ends, and balanced composition are essential. GPT Image 1.5 competes well with Nano Banana Pro in reasoning and text clarity. Example 8. The Geological Layers Challenge. A vertical slice through a planet's crust shows geological layers with realistic texture, while a futuristic underground city is embedded using precise, schematic design. Like example 5, it highlights the model's different mindsets, visual storytelling versus technical drafting. Now to examples 9 and 10, these could be called the paparazzi and disaster tourism challenges. Each set starts with four GPT image 1.5 outputs, followed by four from Nano Banana Pro using identical prompts. Example 9. The Temporal Anachronism Challenge. Here we test the model's grasp of historical accuracy blended with modern aesthetics. The prompt simulates casual smartphone snapshots from specific eras, sometimes just a date and location, like London in 43 AD. The model must pull up the correct architecture and clothing for that time and then translate it into a believable phone photo. GPT Image 1.5 locks itself into social media style selfies. Despite repeated attempts, the goal of capturing true paparazzi-like shots isn't reached. Nano Banana Pro behaves very differently. Example 10, the documentary signage challenge. Another four-part series, but this time we send the camera into moments it clearly doesn't belong. Volcano eruptions, unexplained cosmic events, early human settlements. The goal is to document the chaos from a tourist's point of view, including a handheld sign made from cardboard, scrawled with location and date. The challenge is to make it feel raw, not designed. This one was pure joy to run. A phone, a piece of cardboard, and a ticket to moments before recorded history. Both platforms rise to the occasion. We continue straight on and dive into the image edit feature, of GPT image 1.5. On the left, you'll see the original image. On the right, the results triggered by individual prompts. We'll start with the basics. For the first few inputs, I actually took inspiration from Kling's image 01 prompt guidelines. I wanted to see how those kinds of instructions would land in this new environment. Things get more interesting toward the end. We begin with the prompt, convert image to doodle, naive sketch style. Then comes convert image to snow globe, crystal globe style. If you're going for a comic vibe, try convert image to parody American comic style. Interestingly, the AI seems to interpret the text tone based on the look of the Viking. With convert image to vintage propaganda poster style, we get this version. Take a closer look at the next result. GPT image 1.5 frames the character as a full 3D animation. And now, we step outside the box. Who hasn't wanted to give a Viking a new shirt? The prompt. Dress the Viking with the green shirt. Keep the person and the background unchanged does exactly that. Like a virtual try-on. Of course, you can go two steps further. Start with a 3D animation look, then swap the outfit. Here's what that leads to. After all those changes, no surprise he ends up scratching his head. The prompt, change pose to touching hair, works like a charm. Or maybe you want to see him somewhere else entirely. Change the background to forest, or change the background to an airport runway, gets you there. Time to expand the outfit a bit. How about a blue beret? You don't even need to say much. Add a blue beret on the head does the trick. An empty airstrip still feels a bit bare though. That's where the red spaceship comes in with add the red spaceship standing on the runway into the background. The spaceship looks weathered and gigantic. In comparison to the person, the whole scene suddenly clicks. Let's jump back to the beginning for a moment and reverse the 3D animation style with the prompt convert the 3D animation style character in the image into a realistic human portrait. Do you want a different emotion? Easy. Change the expression to laughing does the trick. And since we're already here, wrap the person in old newspaper 
matches the new mood with the right outfit. You can even move or rotate objects in the image just by typing it in the chat. Rotate the spaceship in the image so that the back of the plane is facing toward the camera. Handles that without a problem. Want to change the hat? Let's take it up a notch. Keep everything else unchanged. Change the beret on the man's head to glass material. Swaps it out in one go. And if you want a full winter scenario, try change the weather to a heavy snowstorm with a lot of snow on the ground and the person's head. And yes, even full fantasy is an option. Change the person into an orc brings it to life. Now we're picking up speed. I've been asked a lot how you can transfer the style of one image to another. Here's how it works. Maybe as a pencil drawing in a sketchbook or in a stylized neo-retro comic illustration style or in dark, cinematic, atmospheric realism dominated by deep blues, cyans and near-black shadows. Render the environment with dense fog and layered mist to obscure depth and create a sense of scale and uncertainty, or just a raw sketch. Wondering how I actually did it? It's pretty simple. I created a reference image in mid-journey with a very specific style, uploaded it to ChatGPT and asked, describe this in detail. That detailed prompt became the foundation for the style transfer in image 1.5. Let's step back for a second. That's where we started. Do you need to be a prompt engineer for this? No. Just ask ChatGPT to help you out, and you're in. As promised, here are a few things I noticed while working with GPT image 1.5. In the API version, the platform offers three image formats, square, portrait, and landscape. But the landscape and portrait formats aren't exactly 16 to 9 or 9 to 16, and there's no guarantee the model will interpret the framing the way you intend. So my advice, always start your prompt with the aspect ratio. For example, aspect ratio 16 to 9, before writing anything else. That sets the structure clearly from the beginning. Second, when I create a new image, I always use a new chat, one chat per image. If you don't, the model might carry over context from earlier prompts in the same thread and accidentally pull in details from previous generations. Not ideal. And finally, OpenAI has something called The Cookbook, a well-organized resource full of prompt tips and use cases. You'll find everything from prompting fundamentals to style transfer, multi-image referencing, and compositing. The link's in the description. And finally, a quick look at how you can create your own images. Go to the ChatGPT homepage, click the little plus icon on the left side of the input bar, and activate Create Image. Then just enter your prompt and hit the arrow on the right. That's it. Your image starts generating. If you want to edit an image instead, simply drag and drop it into the chat, or click the tile labelled Edit, an image, on the lower left. You'll also see a few pre-built style options there. Once you select one, you'll be asked to upload an image. As soon as that's done, generation begins. I tested one of these myself, and the result was genuinely impressive. This turns into that, including all the text elements. There's also a dedicated image interface. Just click images in the left-hand navigation bar. It'll take you to a similar screen with a different color scheme. At the bottom, you'll find all the images you've created. Adding reference images works here too. Just drag and drop them in, or use the small image icon on the far left. Now let's take a look at the built-in editor. Choose one of your previously generated images and click on it. This opens a new interface with two main features. In the top right corner, you'll find Select Area. Use it to mark a specific part of the image. Only that area, highlighted in blue, will be affected during editing. The prompt goes in the box below the image. You can also upload a reference image here if needed. To cancel the process, click Cancel in the top right. If you don't want to work selectively, just stay in the default view. Type your prompt below, upload a reference image if you like, and then hit Generate on the right. If you want to use GPT Image 1.5 via API, there are plenty of options. Platforms like FAL, and others offer access. Just keep in mind that the interface may be different, and depending on the provider, usage could come with a cost. And that's it. 
you're ready to start your journey with GPT Image 1.5. Have fun exploring. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AI, now you know.